you lot need to see this place. Now, I'm not really sure how to explain it. It's sort of like a very, very small chalet, but I think it's a little bit too big to be called a tiny home. I'm not 100% sure on the square meter, so I'll measure it and put it on the screen now. But I think the sort of layout of this place, considering how small the footprint is, what they've managed to fit in here is pretty amazing. So as you walk in on the left, you've got a pretty decent sized bathroom. So obviously you've got your, your sink, tap, really big radiator, which is gonna come in handy for drying all of your skiing stuff. The entire place also has underfloor heating throughout, which I think is really nice. Beams everywhere exposed, which you'll see in quite a few places. It's been having a few difficulties with changing temperatures. I just noticed as well is the plot that this is built on is actually a very weird shape. And you can see that with the tiles on how everything's angled. But to be honest, I think that kind of gives it a bit of character and makes it feel a little bit more interesting than if this was just a bog standard square bathroom. And then you've got such a nice kitchen. Like it's very modern, but the quality looks really nice. I don't know if you can see there, but it's not stone. It's some sort of composite, not really sure what you'd call it. And then obviously you've got your cooking devices there. You've got a very nice oven with all of, what is that? Okay, this is for heating spring rolls. Another thing that I haven't actually seen in England is a tap like this. So obviously it's like this, twisting and whatnot. God, that was a bit violent, but never seen this sort of setup. In some ways is a little bit pointless. Like I completely understand why they did it here. So if you wanted to open up the window, you can like so. This one has got a little catch on it there, which you press and then, and then something happens. Oh, I've broken it again. Nope. Yeah, and it's all got soft clothes, which is very nice. And then on the left here, you got your, your cupboardage devices, very big fridge with a, a freezer up there. And then below that, you've got a very small washing machine, which you can probably only fit two t-shirts in there, but still. It's also got some very cool handles that I haven't really seen before. They're very sleek. And considering how simple that is, I bet you they're not very expensive. In fact, if you go to B&Q, Homebase, any of those places, you can get really big lengths of this, probably in this exact shape, and then cut it down, and then just drill a couple of holes in it, and you can make that same handle pretty cheap. And then on this one, you've got possibly the smallest dishwasher in the entire world. But in a small place like this, I don't really think you need much more. You've got a pretty decent size living room slash, I think that is actually a sofa bed. So if you had people over, they could sleep there. But for your dining room, kitchen, living area, it's actually a pretty decent space. Now, as you lot know, my house in London that I built was 200-ish square meters. So going from that to this, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference in scale. But if you're trying to create a very small space, which is similar to this, in my opinion, if you're building a tiny home or a small chalet, this is enough space. I really think you could do something a little bit smarter with the table, sofa area, and then maybe have proper chairs and whatnot. But this is all you need really. And then again, underfloor heating in here. I really like the exposed ceiling and with all the beams. I think that's really smart. And then you've got a meter by a meter skylight Velux thing. So yeah, it's a very, very nice place to be. One thing I am noticing though, with this sort of light setup, you get dark areas. For example, right next to the door there, obviously this area is taken care of with the windows, again with the sink and these lights. Oh, I've just noticed this as well. I really, really like this exposed wood, where this is kind of like the original chalet old reclaimed wood. I'm not 100% sure how they're producing this sort of finish. So yeah, if you do know how this style wood is made, if it is in fact just reclaimed wood that's then been sanded down and then used a wire brush or whatever, please let me know because I really like it and I want to use it in a project that is going to be coming to the channel pretty soon. Still need to figure a lot of stuff out on that though. Don't know what's in here. Oh, that's just a bin 
type thing. And then in here, you've got a pretty nice sized double bedroom. Again, similar to the last place I was saying in exposed wood, but then this isn't reclaimed. I think it might actually just be tongue and groove boards that are then glued because you can't see where any nails are. Very nice exposed beams. Really, really like that sort of stuff. And then it also has got underfloor heating, which is key because it's about minus five at the moment outside and you can't even slightly tell because I think the levels of insulation they do out here is mad. So it's very, very nice and warm. I also like just how they do the doors here where they just leave all the pine, I'm guessing it is, all exposed. I think that looks really smart. Although actually, in comparison to that style door, I think I would have done this throughout, but these are probably like 50 quid doors and these are like 250 quid because yeah, that looks incredible. Now onto quite possibly my favorite bit in the house. Doesn't really make sense because that is a lovely double bedroom, like perfect size again. If you see here, you've got a ladder with a latch system. They could have made that out of something a little bit lighter, but you've got one of my favorite rooms in the house. Now there is one downside about being up in the roof is you do have this beam here. But once you get past that, which isn't really the end of the world, you've got a very decent sized double bedroom. Now, some of you will probably be going, that's not a decent sized double bedroom. Yeah, obviously it isn't. But when it's just a spare thing that's in the loft, it's decent. And if this was in London, Parsons Green, this room would be probably rented out for 1500 a month. That's the one thing I've learned being in London is how to appreciate space. This is very nice. I'm just lying here, just looking up at this. Lovely. I do want to know what is in there though. So, do a little slidage of the ladder. We're in France now, everything's French. Whee! That's where they keep the water tank. And now there is one very, very big benefit, which in my opinion makes this sort of place priceless is you can sit down here, eat your food, work, watch some TV, and then you just look this way, and then you've got one of the most insane views ever. Mm -hmm. 